Okay, welcome to my latest review. It's time for the single board computer, the Banana Pi. As you may guess, it is similar to the Raspberry Pi. However, it's far more powerful, so if you always felt that some of these other board computers, single board computers such as the Banana Pi or the Beagle Bone, just wasn't powerful enough, this may be worth checking out. So what makes this different from any other single board computer or mini PC? Well, let's start with what makes it unique before I go through all the specs. A couple things just to mention straight off before we go into the specs is that it has a SATA port. Most single board computers are either limited to a USB and then they're normally 200 powered to use them for hard drives or just the SD card slot which limits you depending upon what the board supports and perhaps 32 gigabytes or if it's a board that happens to support SDXE which most don't then you're limited to 64 in most cases you can get 128 uh, but but with a SATA port on this board you can use a regular hard drive you could even use an SSD what else is unique about this board well perhaps not 100% unique but most boards have a Ethernet port and they only go up to 100 megabits. This is one of the few boards I've seen that actually gives you 1 gigabit, which means you've got, got to get better networking, which is great if you're trying to cluster them together. Or what a lot of people like to do these boards, which is what I'm kind of interested in, is using them as web servers. Well, this board is the most ideal board I've seen to use as a web server. The reason being, you have one gigabit Ethernet, so you go get better speeds and more a access on the network than you could on on a limited speed of one megabit. Also, one of the reasons this is better as also one of the reasons this is better for a web server is because of that SATA port. You can plug in a large hard drive for storage. So let's take a look at the specs. Well, we have an ARM Cortex A7 um, unlike a lot of boards such as the Raspberry Pi this isn't single core this is a dual core 1 gigahertz with I'm not sure if I'm saying this right but Melee 400 MP2 GPU it also has unlike some boards 1 gigabit of DDR3 DRAM so that is twice as much as say the Raspberry Pi for storage you can use an SSD card, card as I was saying before however what I should warn you with that if, is you probably if you want a lot of storage you're going to probably want to use the uh, SATA port because it is only SDHC which means you can only use SD mini SDs up to a size of 32 gigabytes so such as so in this camera for example I'm using a 64 gigabyte SDXE card where it isn't compatible because XE SDs are not compatible with this board so that is the only one of the really only real downsides although most boards do seem to not support XE and then you're limited to pretty much just using SD this board even though it is uh, limited to SDHC you then got the ability to use a SATA uh, hard drive anyway so it isn't as big a deal on this board. Uh, for storage as I just mentioned also is extendable with a S it's also extendable with a SATA connection so you can use a two and a half SATA H HDD or S SD uh, with five volts. For video output you have HDMI and composite with, it's also extendable with onboard LV DS connector. For audio, we have HDMI again, which is used. It's just one HDMI port, but HDMI does both sound and video. It also has a uh, three three and a half millimeter stereo audio jack, and onboard microphone input. Not all boards have an onboard microphone input. That's relatively unique to this board. Connectivity, as I mentioned, gigabit Ethernet. It has two USB 2.0 ports, one OTG micro USB port, and one micro USB for power supply for the power supply, like say the Raspberry Pi. So, like the Raspberry Pi, you use a 
a USB to power it, kind of like on a lot of mobile phones. Expansion. You have 26 pin headers, a camera connector and a display connector for LVDS and touchscreen. Uh, it's a good point to mention that it is compatible, it, its headers are compatible with Raspberry Pi accessories. It also has three onboard buttons for power, reset and a U-boot key. It also has an IR receiver. Not all boards have an IR receiver. Why this could be good is if some people make these boards into uh, say little media centers kind of like a Roku or an Apple TV box for their TV, a little media center. So you could use a, a controller with that. Uh, some people, you know, you probably could still could with boards, but you'd have to get little accessories to plug into it, things like that. Or some sort of USB IR dongle, something like that anyway. Well this has nice and clean, the IR receiver is built right onto the board. Dimensions are 92mm by 60mm and it weighs just 48 grams. They suggest using a 5 volt 2 amp external power adapter because of the limit of the USB port. That's also a good idea on the Raspberry Pi and some other boards as well. So to basically recap, what is the good points, what is the bad points, we'll have a closer look at the board in a minute. Well, it has a microphone port, unlike some boards. It has a SATA port, which is very unique to this board really, I don't even know I've seen another, probably haven't seen another board, certainly not a small Raspberry Pi sized board like this. It also has an IR receiver, great for if you're making a media centre. Uh, very few boards have one gigabit Ethernet, which is great if you, you, well, just in general, but also good if you're creating a web server or a cluster. Some of the boards do, but very few. Most don't have one gigabit, that's great. Its pins are also compatible with Raspberry Pi uh, accessories that use the headers. It's roughly the same size as a Raspberry Pi as well. I recommend looking at their website. It, uh, if you not only if you're looking to buy, but also if you already have one, I would go to. I'll put a link in the description. But if you go to bananapie.org, not only is uh, information on getting the software. By the way, this board is compatible with Ubuntu. Some boards, such as the Raspberry Pi, which I keep mostly mentioning that one because I have the most experience with that board. I've used that board the most and also it's probably the most well-known. The Raspberry Pi, because it uses a different type of processor, ARM processor, it's not actually compatible with Ubuntu, unfortunately. This board is, and there's instructions, and there is instructions on getting that. So if you go to their website and click download and install button, you can find information there and download links and what sort of OS's are supported. It's not just Ubuntu of course. If you go to their main home page as well, you, there's the latest news such as, as I was mentioning about clusters, there is an article right now about Raspberry Pi cluster and it sort of says could Raspberry Pi run as a web server could multiple Raspberry, uh, Banana Pi boards act as a cluster to a powerful computer? And there's an example of somebody doing that. So it's definitely worth checking out if you want to run a web server or a cluster. There's an example of a DIY Raspberry Pi laser engraver and various other news articles as well, such as an article here actually on measuring the power consumption of the board. And they also have a forum and a wiki as well. So definitely recommend going there. If you see at the front here, closest to the camera, there is a very obvious silver port, which is a HDMI. And then next to that is a SATA port I was talking about. I should also note it does have mount holes as well on the board. The reason I'm not really getting as close as perhaps I normally would is because my tripod's broken so I'm trying to be the cameraman and hold the camera steady so it don't fall forwards and look at the floor so I'm sure this is a more interesting angle than the floor so never mind hopefully do something about that soon let's turn the board around here 
here we have the two USBs and an Ethernet there and you can see a couple of the mount holes in here as well there I won't go into every little port but I'm just sort of highlighting the main ones and here you can see some pins to the right an audio jack there in yellow and you can see it's got CE and FC markings as well I'm not sure if you can see it from this angle not sure how well you can see but this side does have the little connection there for the power you also have a serial number sticker on the top as well it's sort of a dark blue colour I haven't mentioned before let's just sort of turn it over the reason I'm turning it over even though I perhaps normally wouldn't is to show you a couple of things first off there is the processor it's on the bottom for some reason on this board uh, you should also note that the audio jack kind of like on the raspberry and a couple other ports do overlap the board also over here as well so that's something to bear in mind when say making or choosing a case you should note that the some of the ports do overlap is this unique to this board no because like the raspberry at least the audio jack does overlap as well so how could this board be improved in say a banana pie 2 well like I say the addition of SDXC support would be good although not absolutely vital on this board thanks to the SATA port on some boards I would say it would be nice to see USB 3 instead of 2.0 however again due to the addition of SATA not as big a deal the only other thing I can really think of that would improve this board would be the addition of Wi-Fi. So, if, so somebody's using this as a media center, not really very close to where they can plug it into an Ethernet. They could, would have the option of using Wi-Fi. Although it may be possible to find uh, some sort of addition to use on this to use Wi-Fi, such as just plugging in a USB dongle. But like I say, that's not ideal, not the cleanest way. It'd be nice to have on board. Uh, the other thing I should perhaps know is there is some LEDs on this board for say um, Ethernet connection. There is one user definable LED near the GPIO pins. So do I recommend this board? Yes definitely because this has basically the best of both worlds. You know it's unlike other boards it's got pretty much everything I can think of. It's powerful it's one gigahertz dual core, one giga RAM, and the things I like about it the best, which is fairly unique to this board, is one gigabit Ethernet and a SATA port. So you're making something like a web server or a cluster, brilliant, and few boards I can say that about. What's down? What's a plus side of say getting a Raspberry? Well, it's a non-profit organisation, so you're sort of helping fund that organisation, uh, which is a good thing and it is a good board but if you want more power you want something really a bit more powerful especially for say a web server I could only recommend really this board so if you have any comments just add it to the comments below or message me if you've got any questions don't hesitate to ask and I hope you like this review and I thank the, creative, the company for sending this out to me and please like comment and subscribe